Lord is a strong tower. The hand of the Lord is able. The joy of the Lord is our strength, and the zeal of the Lord shall perform it. God bless you, gifted platform listener. There is too much help in God to fear anything. We are so glad you are part of the gifted family. God's word is so dependable, and so we have made it our goal and purpose to make it not only available to you, but also as practical as possible. Please stay safe. The next voice you will hear after this will be Pastor Kwame bringing you the word of God. My name is Stephanie. Shalom to you and your family. Praise be to God. Praise be to him who sits on the throne. Praise be to him who is in charge of the affairs of men. Praise be to him who overrides the stories of those who cannot write it for themselves praise be to him who take care of the widow praise be to him who takes care of the orphan praise be to him who takes care of the needy the poor look unto god praise be to him who speaks for those who have no lawyers praise be to him who will fight for us and we will hold our peace we give god the glory honor and praise for another day this is the day the Lord has made and we stand in faith and we believe that all things work together for our good. Amen. It's a delight to share the word of God with you, the flower face that lives with her, but the word of God abide forever. Amen. And we thank God for testimonies that are coming out of people's life and, and just trust in God. I mean, I, I, we don't take credit for anything that God will do. Amen. Amen. So it's God. Praise be to God. And we thank him that he is able to to do all things well for us i pray for you that you will receive that which you have asked god for i pray for you that you'll be strong in faith and give him glory let's get busy amen amen my assignment is a special one today so i'm going to spend some time with you in the book of ruth the book of ruth 1 1 ruth chapter 1 verse 1 it's a very small book in the bible it has an interesting storyline so let me read from verse 1 it says now in the days when the judges ruled in Israel, a severe famine came upon the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah left his home and went to live in the country of Moab, taking his wife and his two sons with him. In the days when the judges ruled in the land, right, a severe famine came upon the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judah left his home and went to live in a country of moab taking his wife and two sons with him i want to tell you something this uh today i'm saying that let god explain it let god explain it uh, let god explain it uh, what i mean by it is that in everything in life i have come to realize that we should let god explain it we shouldn't take the explanation and the meaning of things into our hands. Yeah, if you live long enough, let's all come to that conclusion that let's go, let, uh, let us allow God to explain it. And the reason I'm saying that is that I'm looking at this storyline here and if you and I are to explain this story, let me um, do the right thing and tell you a little more for those of you that might not be familiar. So this is the story of Ruth. And um, it begins like this. What ends up happening is that this man in question, he takes his, um, his family out. And then unfortunately, something very sad happens. The man died and the two sons died. And the woman now comes back with Ruth into the land of Israel. And then one thing leads to another. So, um, when you look at this story like this, you try to explain it. The first explanation you might propose is that in the days when the judges rule, it was not a good day. Because if the judges rule and there was farming on the land, it means that the, the judges rule was not a time of quality in terms of spiritual standing. And so, the first problem is that the judges rule and because the judges rule and it's not a, a, a righteous rule so to speak it's not the 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 the, the, the hard work, it's not the best of times it's not the best of time for the people of israel the the the, the, the tendency and the and, and the probability of something uh, harmful or something bad like this happening is great so the scripture begins by saying in the days when the judges rule 
that tells you that anything can happen because it's not the best of days it's not the best it's not the days where the prophets and the kings are in place it's a place where things are in the limbo and then somebody stands up and becomes the judge so it wasn't their best of times for israel so that was how you begin to understand it so in the days when the judges rule right away you write that down the days when the judges rule it wasn't that it's not, it wasn't the good days it wasn't uh how do i put it it wasn't the 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 the, the best of days it wasn't the best of times when the judges rule it wasn't the best of times it was time of captivity and freedom captivity so it wasn't the best of times so that's the first thing and scripture says that and farming came the judges rule farming came it's it's it's, it's reasonable it's it, it's possible because it wasn't the best of times and so there's the people were not in right standing with god that much so a famine can happen all right so we get that out of the way and the scripture says a family now um left judah and went to live in more because they can stay they can't starve to death all right so that is what I'm, I'm i'm trying to explain to you the people leave and then they go and then they died let god explain this uh what i'm reading is that um you can't you can't try to explain this in any shape or form some pastors have done it they say oh my topic for my preaching is don't leave the presence of god when it gets tough you know so you can come from that angle and says the reason they left their life was because moab is not the place you go moabite have a, a, a god i've even preached that before moabite have a god and the god of the moabite they hate men and so any man that goes there the likelihood of them dying is great so the message is that don't go to moab no matter how things difficult in judah stay in the covenant land and 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 you preach so powerfully and people clap for you you can also preach that uh, 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 uh the reason is that um when you travel like that you are leaving the covering of god and that's why they died so the man died and the two sons died and then the woman came back with ruth i want to share with you today let god explain i came to talk to people that your life doesn't make sense let all i'm saying is that we have i've grown a little bit enough for me to preach that let us allow god to explain it ladies and gentlemen the reason i'm saying this is because the only reason i'm saying this is because the only reason i'm saying this is because the woman that came from moab she came with the salvation of god the only reason jesus was born was because ruth came from moab ruth is the great grandmother of jesus christ so let us allow god to explain things amen when i look at the big this is this is this is the what you call the nativity if you want to dig deep into the the the, the line of jesus christ that is the reason why this story is in the bible this is the reason the reason everything in the bible is because of jesus so anything that's in the bible if you study the bible very well you know why they put it in the bible because it's all connected to jesus so you can sit at the story and talk about somebody who has cursed himself by leaving the land of promise to a land of curse to lose their wife and to lose their life and their sons or you can let god explain it and say that there's a grandma in moab that we need in the story of jesus christ so i what i'm saying is this ladies and gentlemen uh Allow God to explain your life. Nobody can explain coronavirus. Nobody can explain. Ruth, the the lady Ruth, she said that, don't call me Ruth. Call me Mara. Call me bitterness because I am bitter. 
I am in pain. Some of you, your life is bitter. Bitter. I don't want to share my 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 my, my personal business on the, on the podcast. But my family have seen some bitterness for the past two years. Nobody can explain. So I came to let you know, let God explain some things, okay? Tell yourself, this one, only God can explain. The woman came better. He said, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara because I am better. I went full. I came back empty. Sister, you didn't come back empty. You came with the mother of the mother of the mother of the savior of the world. Hmm. So I have I have stopped explaining things now. I have stopped explaining things now. I don't know the kind of life you have, but I came to let you know, let God explain it, okay? Let God explain it. Because I, I for one, I don't know how God will use a story like this to give birth to Jesus. Because there's no God in the picture from the beginning. You know, the parts of your life, there's a places of your life. <laughs> Charlie, <laughs> Charlie, listen to me. The things God has used to design the, the life of Jesus, it's not a joke. I have realized right now that I will let God explain things. Some of the, oh, glory to Jesus. Some of the people that had to come in the picture for Jesus to come and save the world. Some of them, if you see them, you even talk to them. Because their life is such a shame. You don't want to associate with them. Oh my. So I, I just want you to let God explain things, okay? And the message is simple, which is where there is no God, there's a lot of God that we don't know. If you see somebody whose life is a mess, divorce, uh, uh, poverty, just, you know, like their life is so out of whack that we don't see anything in it. I don't want to spoil God too much today. But if you look at that, somebody had to sleep. Somebody had to sleep with their own daughter. Oh, Jesus. If you look at the life of Judah, where the, the lion or the tribe of Judah, the Judah, the grandfather, grandfather of Jesus Christ. Judah gave his, his son to a, a girl to marry. And then the son died. Gave another one, died. And Judah himself, the grandpa, went and pregnated. Oh, this, even Jerry Springer will not take this story. It's a mess. So I, I, I came to let you I don't know the kind of life that your life look like. But I want you to know that let God explain it. Because I've, I've, not, I've not grown up in... Uh, I've not, I'm not old, old, old. But I have raised my hands and said... Let God explain it. Some of you have gone through divorce. Some of you have gone through things that you never could calculate that you of all people to happen to you. You have seen money before and you have seen lack of money before. So how do you take in the days that the judges ruled? There was a famine in Israel. So a family from Judah left Bethlehem left into a, a, a land of Moab with their wife and two sons. This is a normal transaction that led into a disaster. So for me, the question I was asking myself is that, so is, is, are we serving a God who just takes the, the, the things that didn't go well to do his will or he is an architect of i don't know i don't know 
so i'm thinking maybe god comes and after we have done everything then he looks for the the things that didn't go well the the the, the leftovers of life the the negative things of life the stupid things of life and he will take it and then he will start working on it to do his divine purpose because that's the only reason i can explain the fact that you are looking for the grandma of jesus christ and you you can't you you went to that direction there are some correct families you know you can, there are better stories you can use you can say that in the in the in the time that the judges rule a beautiful daughter of a judge went to visit the moab land and fell in love with the prince of moab and they became the grandmother of jesus christ that's a nice story that's a nice story i like but it is a painful story I don't know your pain, but your pain has an explanation. Jesus. I said your pain has an explanation. Let God explain it. Right now, I don't know anymore. Anything that happens. I'm telling you, this corona thing. Oh my. God can explain it. Let God explain it. So I just want to t- share this with you. Don't, don't, don't try to explain everything. Leave it to God to explain it. Because only God knows what he's doing with this life we call our own. It's not our own. There's a master designer who is using your pain, your mistakes. Oh, People preach that they made a mistake. They made a mistake. How do you leave the presence of God like that? Into a strange land where God says the Moabites should not be in the congregation and blah, 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 blah. There's a, there's a decree already that you don't go to Moabite country for anything. Let God explain it. So in summary, let God explain your mistakes. Let God explain your pain. Let God explain your confusion. Let God explain your mess. Let God explain everything you don't understand. Because I just realized that God is the only one who can explain. Let's pray. Father, we thank you because we can rest assured that in times when we don't know, you, you will give us strength so that we can walk through things we don't understand and rest fully in your promises that you are able. I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice whose life is completely out of control, that they don't know what to believe anymore. May you strengthen us and give us a victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh-huh.